So today, let's talk about thinking. More specifically, how to make your characters look like there's an actual thought process going on inside their head, other than just a lifeless puppet that's just moving around the screen. So there's a few things you can do that I've learned from my supervisors while working on a few shows. So I thought it would be helpful to share some things that I like to think about when I'm animating a character who needs to be thinking, which should be all the time. You can also find some good tips in the animator's survival kit. Let's jump into Toon Boom and get started. Let's keep the first example pretty simple. We'll just look at the face and have him facing forward. We're going to start with our keys. We have our first neutral expression. Then we have where the eyebrows are a little bit down and he's frowning. And our last key is when one eyebrow is up. So there are a few steps to make this look like a thinking character. The first thing we want to do is time this out. We want the timing to be a little bit slower so the audience can read what is actually happening. Move this frame all the way down to let's say 24 and we'll move this to frame 11. Okay, perfect. I'm happy with that timing, so let's start animating. So the timing's looking good, but remember, we can change that at any point in this animation. So it's not set in stone, you can always change your timing. And now let's add an anticipation. Right now, his eyebrows go from neutral just to down like this. So instead, we're gonna add a little stopover. Let's add a keyframe. Instead of going down, we're gonna raise his eyebrows up. We can even use the deformers and raise them this way. Let's raise the eyelids as well. And we can even grab all the eyes and stretch them just a little bit. Nice, that's looking good. Now let's do the same thing for our last keyframe. And we'll make this eyebrow drop it down just a little bit. If you noticed, I marked my keyframes in red and my breakdowns, or my anticipations in this case, in blue. This will keep me organized. Now let's add some tweens. And here, we really need to be thinking about our ease in and ease out. Let's start with our first two keyframes. Press Control K and add a few tweens. There's no ease right now on these tweens. But I want to ease out of this key and ease into this breakdown and then ease out of this breakdown and ease in to this key. So we need our graph editor for that. These values, you can play around with them. So I'm gonna do an ease out of 15 and an ease in of let's say 25, and then we'll ease out by a value of 30, and then let's say 55. And I'm just thinking of these randomly. We can change these numbers if we wanted to. Our animation is starting to come together. For our next set of keys, I'm not going to tween right from here to here. I'm going to move over a little bit so there's a little bit of a pause. Let's add our keyframe, add our tweens, and now we can ease in and ease out again. Our animation was looking good, but after watching it back a few times, I realized a few things needed to change. The first thing, I increased the timing so everything takes longer. You'll also notice there is a longer pause between our two actions. And that's because we're going to need that space to do some pupil animation later. The last change I want to make is we're going to add a little bit of an overshoot and a settle to these actions. So as our character comes down, we're going to go, let's say, two, four frames ahead and keyframe that. Now what we can do is take our old keyframe and drop the features down slightly. Maybe we can squash it a tiny bit. And at this point, the more subtle you are, the better. There's a tiny movement, so our eyebrows still feel a little alive, even though they've come to a complete stop. Wow. And let's do the same thing for our other key. This time, we'll go two, four, six frames and add a keyframe. And now we can slightly move the eyebrow up and slightly stretch the features of the face. Add our tween, and we have a slight movement there. So when we play through, we get a little bit of a bounce to our features. The timing, the spacing, and the squash and stretch is looking good. Now it's time for some finishing touches. I'm talking about pupil movements and eye darts. When people are thinking, their brain is scanning different objects, their mind is wandering, their pupils aren't just staying in one place. It's through that pupil movement, that really sells a thinking character. As he comes down, let's have his pupils look to the side. So we don't want our pupils to remain static. We want to give them a little bit more movement. I'm going to get rid of these keyframes 
so my pupils stay in the same position. Now we're going to re-add these tweens. So then as he comes back up, the pupils follow. We're going to need more space, so let's extend our timeline. Let's have his eyes dart to this side. As before on frame 71, they'll come back to their original position. You can see, with those eye darts, it really makes him look like he's thinking about something. Especially those tiny little movements, it really helps sell that acting. There's one thing that we can still add, and that is a blink. So I converted everything to twos, and this is going to make doing the blinks a little bit easier. So I'm thinking as he comes up, we're going to have him blink. I'm going to grab his eyelids, move them slightly down, we'll close his eyes on this frame. Here we'll have the eyes slightly open. We're going to have them almost fully open here. And then finally they open up at the last keyframe. Without even touching the body, the facial acting is really shining through. His eyes are darting and that blink really helps keep the character alive and sell that he's actually thinking about something. So looking at this example, especially with the, the, you know, the raising of the one eyebrow, it's really, it's a really corny, it's cliche, and it's not very good acting. But the principles are kind of what I want you to take away from this. And that's the anticipations, right, of the eyebrows. Adding those pupil movements, those eye darts, adding those blinks at the end. And even the slight overshoot and settle to the features of the face. And apply those principles to any shot that you do. Let's jump into a more realistic example where we use not only the face but the body and give the shot more context. Our character is about to say something and then he forgets what he's gonna say and then he has to think again. Already less cliche acting, this is kind of more of a realistic scene that you might get if you're animating on a show. Let's Woo! extend the timing a little bit and let's think about where we want to put our anticipations. So I definitely want one in front of this keyframe. I want him to go down and then up. But from this to this, I don't want an anticipation per se, but I do want a little bit of an overshoot. My six or four frames over. Perfect, let's add our tweens. And already I know we need more of a pause in between our two actions, so let's move those down. Now we need to add our ease in and ease out. Perfect. Our second action is a lot quicker than our first, so we're varying up that spacing to make our animation more interesting. Okay, so I went in and I cleaned up this animation a little bit. I added some overlapping action, I added some squash and stretch, and I converted it to twos. But if you notice, it's still missing those eye darts and pupil movements. So, so let's take a look and see if we can add those in now. As he comes up, let's see, let's have his pupil move around this frame. Same thing with the other one. We just want to make sure we're moving the pupils same distance. So over here, I'm going to have the pupils move into their position before the action even starts. So we're going to have to tween them here and now the other one. The pupils are even leading the action. Woo! The last thing, have the pupils dart up and look to the side. And of course, maybe add a little bit of extra movement to them. Right, and there you go guys, that's a very simple animation, it didn't take us very long, but the character is really coming to life. Most of that life is being communicated through those pupil movements. So remember, you don't really need a different pose every time a character says something different. Sometimes you can stay in one pose, but use the pupils and the eyes to kind of communicate what the character is thinking. Sometimes that makes the character feel more alive than if it was just moving around all the time. So that's all I have for making characters think. Any questions, please post them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see everybody in the next video.